I think this, this core idea of life being a pattern that propagates itself, um, I think, you know, there are people who you often hear it said that we just don't understand life, we don't understand the origins of life. But to me, this insight, the idea that it's possible for patterns to exist that can propagate themselves is, is an incredibly powerful um, explanation as to why we see these vastly complex systems around. You know, to me, it's the same or a related insight to the kind of systems understanding of Darwinian natural selection and evolution, yeah. because yeah. You know, it may seem very improbable that you have these structures, but all the ones that didn't propagate themselves successfully, we don't see those. And we only see the, the improbable ones that managed to propagate themselves. Yeah. And, and there's another interesting relation to evolution, and that comes from the flow aspect of metabolism. And this also has been studied extensively over the last 30 years or so. And um, what, what has been discovered with the, uh, the mathematical tools of complexity theory uh, is that um, living systems generally uh, are able to maintain themselves in a state of balance. And we all know that that's well known. That for example, when, when you are in a certain environment, uh, like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing a shirt because it's warm right now in Berkeley. Uh, it will be quite hot actually in the afternoon. Now, when I go out in the afternoon, there's a big change of temperature of, of several degrees, but my body temperature doesn't change very much, maybe a tiny bit. So there's something called homeostasis that the organism is able to maintain itself in a state of balance. But what the big discovery is of the last 30 years is that every now and then such a, a system, which is an open system, open to the flow of energy and matter, and in this flow, every now and then, uh, a system may encounter an instability. And at that instability, where the entire system becomes unstable, it may either break down and die, but much more frequently, it will break through to a new state of order and a, a new state of organization and behavior. And this process, which... Uh, um, uh, involves the emergence, the spontaneous emergence of novelty, of new forms of order, is nowadays uh, generally called as emergence. It's, it's just called emergence, and it has been recognized as the dynamic origin of development, of learning, and of evolution. And so the big discovery is that any open system in, and we could talk about more what the characteristics are, any system that is continually processing flows of energy and matter and staying in balance at the same time, will go through these processes of emergence. There's always the potential of novelty. And so evolution does not begin with adaptation to the environment although that's an important part of it, but evolution begins with the natural tendency of life to reach out for novelty, to, to, um, to have the emergence of new forms of order. That's, that's the basic uh, dynamic of evolution. And then the systems view, if I can just go on say uh, yeah. one more thing, the, the systems view also, well, first, let, let me say that the systems view acknowledges the basic insight of Darwin, which was a tremendous insight that we are all interlinked by common ancestry. So the Darwinian vision is a vision of a vast network of living organisms in space and time, interlinked in space and time through common ancestry. So it's a thoroughly uh, holistic and systemic vision. And what, what, and Darwin also recognized the force of natural selection. He didn't understand in detail how changes would take place. And that came with the 
uh, discovery of genetics and genetic mutations. But what the systems view adds is that genetic mutations are not the only source of change. There are two more sources of change. One is the free exchange of genes by bacteria, which occurs regularly. And uh, the other one is symbiosis, uh, the, the tight living together of two different species, of one living inside the other, typically a microorganism living inside a larger cell and cooperating in such a tight way as to um, give rise to a new species of organism. So this is called symbiogenesis. And this theory was promoted um, uh, very strongly by Lynn Margulis. And so now we have three avenues of evolution. And what happens in all these three avenues is uh, there's a new genome that is, is created either through, through genetic mutations or through an organism acquiring genes of a bacterium or for an organism uh, entering into permanent symbiotic relationship with an organi uh, organism. So in all three cases, there is a new genome that arises. And then now natural selection means that this genome has to function within a certain genetic and cellular environment, which means it has to be integrated into this environment. And this is a highly ordered process. So we see that evolution has random elements. All three avenues of the creation of the new genome have random elements, but the overall process of integrating it into a new functioning organism or species is a highly ordered process. And so that's, that's also a big uh, discovery. It's not all random and natural selection. Yeah. There's great order. Right. And I think that's um, a beautiful idea that the, um, the niche that the organism ends up fulfilling is where the order comes in, as, as far as I can see. You know, there's a sense in which um, a bird is nothing more than the kind of manifestation of the potential for life to inhabit that niche. You know, it's, the, it's this radical interconnectedness where birds don't exist if plants don't exist and if the sun isn't, you know, if we're not in the solar system orbiting a sun. Um, and so you can see that, yeah, while there's all of this um, randomness and creativity, it gets funneled through, um, it gets funneled into places where there is order uh, that gets manifested in the organism. Um, yeah, and you, and, I like what you say, James, because uh, what you just said mirrors what I said before about subatomic physics, that, mm. that properties, the basic properties of a particle derive from its interactions with other particles. So the, the basic properties of a bird, the type of feathers it has, the type of wingspan, the type of food it eats, you know, all these basic properties derive from the niche in which it lives. Right. And I think something I suspect we maybe agree on, um, tell me if, if I'm wrong, um, is the idea that, that uh, the concept of process is really, uh, you know, maybe if you want to say metaphysically, it's the kind of the foundation of understanding the world. Effectively, all is process. Life is a process. Even matter it can be understood as a process. Yes, it's, it's a process and it's a patterned process. Right. And we can study the patterns of, of the process. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And that's why I guess there's this, these same principles fall out at the same levels, whether it's subatomic particles or, or living systems or the entire ecosystem. Right. We see right. the systems perspective is very, very powerful.